Hello, everybody. Welcome back to part two of the fire truck development series. Uh, so in the last episode, we finished doing the overall door shapes and we worked with unions and uh, negative parts to try and make these shapes out of a few, as few parts as possible. So now what we have to do is fill in this section here in the middle between the two doors and then this one in the end. So I want to start with this one because this is one of the easier ones to do. So um, for this truck specifically, we have a little metal piece that runs along the side, along this right part of the door. So we're going to be using this and we're going to cut it out from the part that we want to place down uh, for uh, the color on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. Then I'm going to separate it. So now I have a regular part again, and I'm going to move it into place to about here. Yep, there we go. And this is, I think I want to go just in the halfway mark. There we go. That looks really nice. So now this part is uh, going to need to be cut. And then we also have to cut out the uh, anything else. All right. So normally I would use, um, well, when I was developing these trucks a lot earlier, when I first started doing this, I would use one part here, put another one on top, then use a wedge here and do all that. But I'm not going to do that anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this one up, making sure I'm not holding control. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it all the way across. Um... For now, I think I can run it to here, and that would work. So I duplicated this part. I want that uh, over there for a little bit. And then I'm going to make the pieces that we want to cut out. So this pretty much lines up with the door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the uh, door all the way across, including the uh, hinge here, which is going to be 0.1 studs wide. Now what I want to do is I'm going to get the cutout for uh, this door again that we used in the last episode to make the arc here because I want to keep a small part of it. So I'm going to duplicate the door and just move it. Then continue to separate it until I'm left with the uh, piece that I want, which is this one. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to and I'm going to negate this because what I want to do is I want to make a uh, squared off edge for the hinge. So then I'm going to move it here and here and then I'm going to pull it up to the proper size that I want it. So I want to go about here. Actually go up one more. Yep, that's perfect. So this is where the hinge is going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to negate this from the circle. Alright, so as you can see, it's uh, within the door, which is fine because we're not going to be negating it to the door. We're going to be negating it to this. 
And then this is going to get negated into the door. So now we have this little piece that's squared here because that's where the hinge is going to be. And the only reason why I made this part is so that we can negate it from here. Now, I just remembered that this is only 0 0.505 studs wide. So, in, uh, at least in thickness this way here. And so is this block. So we need to make this wider. Which we can do because the circle is already pretty large. And it doesn't matter how wide you make it, just as long as it's a lot bigger than the, uh, the part that you're trying to negate it from. And this is exactly where the door is going to be. Now, um, I also remembered that we have another part that we want to cut out. Because we want to cut out this bottom section. So, how am I going to do this? Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, get that circle again, the original one. I want to see if it's the right size to where we're looking to get. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the door all the way past the bottom, then union it with the... Uh, cylinder. Then I'm going to union this. Actually, wait. I have to negate this first. And then this will be the complete door cutout. And then this should fit perfectly where I want it right here. One more over. There we go. Uh, so we're going to have to cut out the rims. That's what we're going to have to do there. Uh, but this already looks pretty good. And this part is open because there's going to be a uh, block here. Or I might use a, a cylinder just to make it a little bit more realistic. So, uh, ah. So we have to fix that. Okay. Easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo a few times. Until it's back where we want it. And let's see. So what I want to do is I want to get this part, and then I'm going to duplicate it and size this. To what I need this area to be. As you can see, that's lined up pretty well. Then I would just want to enlarge it a little bit. So now this will be a negative part. And what this is going to do is it's going to cut out. Actually, it's not big enough. What this is going to do is it's going to cut out that area that we don't that we want to leave into this block. See, there we go. So this is the entire back door shape. This hinge is going to be here. There's the door. We have the step. And then we have uh, this metal piece. Let's see how that fits. Now, just so I can see where everything's lined up. All right, looking good. The only thing that concerns me is just this little notch. I can probably fix that a little bit later. But for now, we just want to continue and keep on showing you guys how uh, you can do this. Okay, so um, we have the rims, right? The rims here. This is why I kept this part, because now this is our 
negative part. And then we're going to be able to cut it out from here. So I'm going to leave this with a negative part. I'm actually going to change the color so you can see it. There you go. So you can see it a little bit better along the uh, red. So we need to make a wedge cut out here, a diagonal cut out, and then continue running it all the way across. But first I have to look at my reference. Uh, okay. So this is actually, rather than being white, it's actually going to be silver. Or rather than being white or the red color that we already have, this is actually going to be like a metal kind of style. It's actually very cool. So we need to get a new part. So we already have this one here. Perfect. And I'm going to make it 1 or uh, point 0.1. 0.1 studs, so that way it's it's not really thin, but it's and it's not too thick at the same time. So I'm gonna make this stick out a little bit. Uh, how big do we want it? Eh, about another 0.1 studs out. And there we go. And then we'll get to the roof. The roof is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. Okay, so now we have to do the front door, but before I get there, I want to try and use one part for the entire side, at least until we need to start doing stuff with the window here. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out how long we want a straight part and then where we're going to put the cylinder part here. So, what we're going to need is this part. Then I'm going to leave a 0.1 space. I'm going to leave a little space for the hinges. Actually, this might be perfect right where it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, then go into the Properties tab, and we see Shape. I'm going to change it from Block to Cylinder. So the cylinder is there, but it's not facing the proper way. So what I need to do is I need to rotate and resize. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees this way, so now it's straight up and down. Then I need to resize it to 0.5 and then give it the height. And there we go. So the cylinder's there, you just can't see it, which is okay, because the only reason that that's happening is because we need to size it a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the template back so you can see it. And I want the edge of the cylinder to reach the edge of this on the picture. Not quite there yet. All right, so point 0.8 and point 0.8. That looks good. So now the edge of this block is going to go all the way until it meets up with the edge, outermost edge of the circle. There we go. So now we have a nice smooth curved edge out of a cylinder and a straight block. And we're going to be able to work the front once we get to that point. So now we see here is that we are missing the front door and we can kind of select it. It's there. Uh, so what I need to do is grab the door and try and find it in between the part, this uh, block here. All right. So this is where the door is, and I'm going to pull this off so we can see where everything is on the template. Because we want to get rid of the hinge as well as the uh, bottom step here. So I'm going to move the template back so it's pressing against this uh, 
this block on the door. There we go. Uh, one more. Sometimes if you uh, can't get it perfect, you have to move a little closer to the arrow to do a little bit more precise movement. But then you get into the issue where you can't see it. You just have to roll with it sometimes. Uh, I think temporarily what I'll do is I may throw in a brick. And this is the uh, hinge, is what it's gonna, where it's gonna be. I can replace this with uh, cylinders to make it look more like a uh, real fire truck hinge, but for now, a block is fine. And a block is what I've been using on my FDNY trucks. It just makes my life a lot easier. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to yep, this is my copy of the door, just making sure. Okay. Um we can get rid of that. We just need one solid block. And then this is gonna go all the way down. I'm gonna enlarge this part. And we also have to account that we have this wedge here. So we're gonna negate it and then widen it and then negate it again. So that went from solid, so that way it's you can actually move it properly like a regular part. Because if if you keep it negated, then you're just going to resize it, make it large, and it's going to be out of proportion to what you need. You're going to have gaps. So now, when we need this, we have the perfect door shape that we want to cut out. And I actually almost forgot. I almost forgot that we want to cut out the hinge as well. So, how am I going to do this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part here and then size it over the size of the wedge, and I'm going to cut out this bottom half. So that way I can extend this door without having to worry about the hinge part getting cut. So then I'm going to negate the the wedge, so that way it's a regular part, then I'm going to cut this, just like that. Then I can negate it again, and I can run this door part 0.1 studs, 1, 2, because I'm using 0.05, which is half of that. As you can see, now we're going to get a straight cut. So then I'm going to put this through the block. And I'm going to bring this one through the block as well. And this should be a negative part. There you go. Now you can see both of them. So here we have the top door, or the back door, and the front door, and all the interior, sp or uh, all the space in between. So what I'm going to do is then I'm going to union and make sure that it's a good size. Now, as you can see, we have a little bit of a space here. We don't want that, so I'm going to separate it and make the adjustment. So there we go, now we have that part again. So now you can see it. There it is. And this is sticking out the bottom, so that way we don't run into any issues. There it is. Leaving space for our hinges, as well as the doors.
Oh, actually, we still have the uh, circle here. We have to cut out the... Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and these three negative parts, and I'm going to union them to this one. Now we have the proper shape. Perfect, the way that we want it. Not worried about the windshield. We're going to get to that. That's going to be a little challenge. So we have the perfect shape, but not completely. We still have to make this cut. So what I need to do is do a another wedge cut here. Let's see. I'm going to grab a wedge from this door simply by duplicating it and then separating all the unions, getting rid of the original part, so that way we still have a copy of our door, and now I have a wedge that I can work with. Now I have to size it to the way that I want it to be placed. So the part that I am trying to cut out is going to be about there. Actually, I'm going to run this down and run it to the exact size that I want it to be, which is going to be there. Perfect. Then we're going to do our doubling trick again, but we're going to have to do a, a few extra things before we move on, because remember that we want to cut out the whole flat roof here before we get to this, because this is not cut out on here, so that's what we're going to have to do. So I'm going to pull up my calculator, I'm going to double it, just like we did in uh, part one. So there we go, now that I've doubled the this way here and then this way here, now we have the perfect shape, but we have to cut out this this white part here, and then we're going to have to do something very special with this and then make that uh, go down nice and smooth into this bar here. Uh, I don't think you can see my cursor on the video. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, I'm talking about this white bar along here, along the top, which is very similar to this one up here. Then there's going to be that angle, and it's going to go all. There's going to be an angle following on top of this wedge, right, pretty much inside of it, which is going to be kind of the here along this edge, and then it's going to run all the way across. Alrighty, so I just realized something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this wedge around, and I can use a single part. and cut it out with the wedge rather than uh, doing multiple parts. Don't worry about that for now. So now, because we can just do this, then negate it. And then negate this, and there it is. Now, actually, I want to bring it up a little bit more. So remember that we have to make this bigger than uh, the part that we're trying to cut it out from. So I can run it in a little bit. There we go. Perfect. There it is. Oh, it looks like we missed a little bit. All right, now you might notice that there might be some gaps here, and now the reason for that is because this is a regular cylinder rather than a union. Watch what happens when I union it. 
it automatically filled in all the gaps. So don't worry about that if you see any gaps along the rims here, because it's just because that you're using a regular cylinder rather than a union uh, cylinder. Uh, for some reason, that changes the way that these uh, little sides, it's not even really a cylinder, it's more of just a polygon with many, many sides, just to make it look uh, circular. So these sides will line up if it's a union, because it's lined up with another union instead of a cylinder. So don't worry when you see these gaps. Oh, I think we have another... We have another one of those situations that we ran into on this side. There it is. Perfect. Exactly what we want. And now we have just finished filling in all the gaps. Uh, we haven't gotten to the rim yet. So we have a little bit of an issue here where it's kind of calling for a bigger circle. Uh, I could probably fix that with more red, but I'm pretty sure that's part of the rim, so... Uh, I think what we have now is perfectly fine. Sometimes we can ignore stuff like this. Uh, we'll see what we can do later once we get to there. Anyway, we're now we're starting to lead into the front. We're starting to get to the difficult part, and here, you can see, it's just starting to look kind of like a fire truck cab. And then we're gonna have to work with this, uh, white brick here. But this is perfect. This is going pretty well. Uh, we'll also have to cut out the windows. We'll get to that, don't worry. And that's pretty much it for part two. Stay tuned for part three. Thank you so much for watching. This is Pocop1234, signing out.